Everything's gonna be alright And when we get there I'ma see a pretty, pretty, pretty young thing I'ma ask her to take my hand And to the floor And we gon' dance And when we get there Best believe we're gonna do a two-step Ain't no throwing in here So don't stress Step to the right Then side to the left Good evening, welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. Hopefully we'll make it a little bit better for you tonight. Tonight we welcome a very talented young uh, model and actor. His name is Ezekiel Ajelbi. He's best known for playing young Jeff on the CW TV series Dynasty. Find about his story and how he got his break and what he's doing now. Then in Hot Topics, we're talking about everything everyone's talking about from the Ace Rocky situation. And then find out what a school did how they threatened the parents of students who owed food debt, you know, school lunch debt. Find that out. Uh, movie reviews, sports, fashion, the best indie music out here. One of mine's all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Plus, Instagram, and of course, our official website at StephenKnightShow.com. When we come back, the question of the day and hot topics. Right back after this. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. I, I, I took it off. Yeah. Yeah. Trouble she causing the way that she rocking and shaking her too much. On in a fat too matter, put it on me like she from Kakatai. All the men and scatter, that all been it, I want in a track line. When you tie your lap and you wear your skin test, when you rocking your too much, Bangle, I want my ready. Chamu, I won't take you. Anything you want, I give it to you. Take my knee, my money, my car, my clothes, my everything. Whether you not see fun, get capping. Like I said before, hungry line blocking. You leave it, another scam and we'll pop it. Grab it, squeeze it, we'll drop it. Is that it done? You will be trying how to catch it. You know you're missing a casa by the bed tape. Fix it, oh fire, join how to catch it. Then you won't speak serious now till they get Pretty girl, let me take you out of dinner. I got a cheddar, forgive me, I was a sinner. Gonna be better from January down to December. Take trips, go to spots even in the winter. So sexy, gorgeous, and beautiful. Everything. That we do is so memorable. I'm feeling you from your head down to your toes. Don't have to speak on it, I'm gonna show. Jackie, 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 
Anytime she walking, yeah, no. the boy them be watching. Anytime she walking, the boy them be jacking. Yeah, no. Baby got you temptation. Anytime you turn virgin, you come confusion. Anytime you walk, the boy them be watching. Anytime she walking, the boy them be jacking. Anytime you walk, the boy them be jacking. Anytime she walking, 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 the boy them be jacking.
Yo, what up, y'all? It's Gary L. Gray, and you are listening to the Stephen. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Miss Parker's like, it's just you on me tonight for Hot Topics. How you feeling? I'm well. Happy Monday. How are you? I cannot complain. Cannot complain. How was your weekend? Had a pretty um, busy weekend. My niece and sister are in town. Uh, my niece will be going to college next year, so she's doing some college tours, trying to figure out where she wants to be. Um, so it was great seeing them and hanging out with them. We went to Spelman and Clark and check out the campuses. And um, then yesterday I had a couple of friends over and just hung out at home. Yeah, yeah, that was fun uh, yesterday. Did you? Did she like the uh, schools here? She yeah, she did. She um, she likes Atlanta, so. Okay. I think it'll be more so um, her trying to decide if she wants to stay home or, or leave, move out of town. I got you. Well, best of luck to her in picking her picking her school, for sure. Yeah, excited time. For yeah, sure. yeah. My weekend was kind of laid back. I did go to a birthday party on Saturday. Shout out to Al B. His thirty fifth birthday party. It was nice spot um, in Norcross, and then of course hung out with you yesterday, which was a lot of fun. Catching up with some old friends I haven't seen in a while. So always a good mm-hmm. time, and thanks for hosting us again. Of course, of course. All right, you guys, enjoy. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. All right, well, our question of the day is: uh, Would you ever have an office romance? No. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't even. I tried it one time; it was a bad idea, and then people get in your business. But it was funny because we asked the question on Facebook, and this one lady who I do remember her from my uh, job in college. That's where she met her husband. And <laughs> she said, if I didn't, I wouldn't be married now. But they've been married for Yeah, a I know a few people who married people they met at work. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so tweet us at um, home. Let us know, would you ever have an office romance? All right, so ASAP Rocky, um, this uh, legal saga he's in, he's getting more complicated. Now, as you know, he was in Sweden, and there was someone who was kind of heckling him and trying to, uh, you know, incite him to... To be violent with him. And so he fell for the bait and there was a fight. And of course he's in jail now um, on assault charges. Well, the guy who the Swedish um, authorities are not charging the guy who, you know, instigated him. They're saying that after watching the video that, um, you know, the man was just defending himself when he threw his headphones at um, ASAP's bodyguards. Um, And they're saying that Kanye um, and Trump I mean, Kanye and um, Kim are trying to get Trump to uh, to help him get him back to our get him back to the United States. Um, and Trump tweeted something saying that he was working on it and he had a good conversation. But what do you think about this whole case? Do you think? Do you think there was a conversation? I think it was on Wendy. Um, she was saying that from what she's heard in Sweden, they don't care about Americans. They definitely don't care about Black Americans because you're a rapper. Um, do you think race has something to do with why he's still over there? Yeah, um, I think, you know, obviously, it's, you know, from my experience with traveling, there's a lot of places where black people of, of any um, nationality or or um, country are not really welcome. So yeah. that's, that's part of just, the, just a part of traveling anyway. Um, but Sweden has been known for detaining people for fighting, especially Americans and especially black Americans for fighting and keeping them there and taking away their passports. It's, so it's not, it's not unusual. It happens almost every week. Mm-hmm. Um, and so um, that's why they've been placed on, there was a list that came out, the most friendly places for black Americans or black people of color to travel. And they were like at the bottom. Yeah. With that being said with his particular case i really don't care honestly i, I don't care mm. um he didn't care when black men were black men and boys were being killed he said he had he had no comment because he couldn't relate because yeah. he was rich and he lived in Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. um so i don't care i, I have no opinion of uh, either way i don't care about what happens to him what he I, I i just i don't care just just as much as he didn't care about the black people you know black issues and and could care less if black men were getting killed and shot I could care less if he's in prison in Sweden. Yeah. And apparently there was a white rapper who went over there and he got in a fight as well and all he got was a fine and we you know he was able to come back so hopefully he'll get back soon but yeah that they were talking about his past and the comments he made about uh you know that, but that's how the universe humbles you. That's true. He thought that he had money and he and he was around rich people 
that he was above what was happening to, to black Americans yep. in this country. Mm-hmm. That's how that's how the universe humbles you. You never know you never know what what's next to you, and that's why it's always right for you to karma always comes from. for you to for somebody ask you about black people being killed. And at that time, they were like three or four. You're kind of low. Miss Parker, you're kind of low. There you go. We were saying that? I, I said at the, at the time that he made a comment was when we had multiple police shootings. Happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so for him to make that comment just show how, you know, your ego can get in the way and you feel that you're better than somebody because of the people you're associated with and the money you have and your status or whatever. But it all comes back around. So yep. that's just where I stand with that. Very true, very true. All right. Well, um, in 29 states, including Wash and I'm sorry, and Washington D.C., uh, they were only paying, and this is 2019. They were only paying a minimum wage of seven dollars twenty-five cents an hour. Now it's been at least 10 years since the federal law um, level um, was increased to fifteen dollars an hour. Well, it looks like now lawmakers agree. So the House passed a bill last week that would raise the federal minimum wage to fifteen an hour, according to CNN. The House voted, the the vote was 231 to 199, and three Republicans joined mostly Democrats in supporting the bill. My, when I read the the vote that 199 people thought that $7.25 is enough for people to live on, and they were mostly Republicans, what are your thoughts on that? Is it out of touch? Um. I, I, obviously they are and this whole um, minimum wage thing has been going on for a while yep. um, I, I remember the conversation taking place when I was a teenager working and it was like at 515 or 575 yep. at the time yep. but it's always been out of touch it's always been it's been rich people making decisions about poor people yeah. rich people making decisions about people who are barely trying to make it well, work class people um, and, and there are documentation and studies that shows that at that rate, no one can afford to live a decent life. Mm-hmm. Can afford, I think if, the, if rent and everything was reflected in that, right. that would make sense. But right. it's not. It's not a reflection of market. So just basic economy would tell you that people need to make this much money to be able to survive in this economy. Uh, I just think it's just it's people who are out of touch. It's people who are who just don't care, don't have any compassion, um, selfish, entitled, um, and just really lacking humanity at at base at the at its basic level. Um and that shows not only in that in, in this discussion but in a lot of things that these decisions are being made about. Yeah, it's true. And you think about with gentrification, you know, they come in places um that, you know, were affordable to live and then they uh, you know, remodel and regentrify the areas and then push the people out. So they I mean it's like they don't care about people. They don't care about those that aren't financially successful. And it's very sad. And I can't believe that the vote was that close. 231 to 199. That's ridiculous. We got to do better. All right, well, um, Kevin Garnett. So his wife filed for divorce um, early, earlier this year, and she sought physical custody of their two kids, Cavalli and Capri. Now, um, Kevin responded by filing joint legal and physical custody with the kids. Well, she is now suing him and she wants him to pay, her name is Brandy Garnett, she wants him to pay $100,000 a month to cover spousal and, and child support. Um, they think that this this may only be temporary because, um, because, it, because it's not a permanent deal in place. Kevin is trying to fight this because he said that, they, that she signed a prenup, the couple signed a prenup uh, a month before they got married. But she's saying that he um, violated the terms of agreement. Do you think a hundred thousand dollars a lot is too much money? I mean, there should be, I think we are getting more worked up in it than we need to be because I think that this matter is obviously a hundred thousand dollars a month is a lot of money and it's ridiculous. Right. But I think a lot of times the public gets involved because the, you know, the news breaking is a headline and we don't know the legal details of, of this stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think eventually it'll probably be worked out. Legally, it will make sense once it's worked out, if they, especially if they have some kind of prenup. But if they have legal legal documentation with some agreements, and a judge does not award anything that, 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 the, that the person uh, 
pay a salary history or their finances doesn't reflect right. So for us, we poor. So not poor, but compared to them, mm-hmm. so hundred thousand sounds like a lot. But he may he may make with his endorsements and all the stuff he has going on contracts, he may make two hundred thousand dollars a month. You know what I mean? Like we don't know the details of it. Um, so I just try not to get too worked up in that. Yeah, when I when I read the numbers, I was like, that just sounds ridiculous. I would, but ridiculous to my standards because I'm not. I don't live their lifestyle. Maybe she does spend a hundred dollars, uh, ten thousand dollars a day. I don't like. I don't know what she's already spending, and they they do look at that. Like what you know what what do you spend a month? How much money is going in and out of your household per month? So all of those things I had to be rational about the numbers, and you know. I was talking to someone about this a while ago who was a financial advisor, and he was saying how the public reacts to these big numbers, these celebrities, with, wow, because we don't have that money. But for them, it's just it's really not that big of a deal because their their lifestyle is a reflection of that. Um, so I, I'm more mindful of that now, and I think that I think eventually, especially if there was a prenup involved, it will be worked out mm-hmm. legally. Yeah. So, yeah, I th- I think though if he has to pay this and they do come to an agreement, she needs to give him the money back <laughs> because that's a lot yeah, of money. <laughs> you know I what I mean? If he, if he does have to pay in the meantime before right. the legal stuff comes uh-huh. back, that that should, that should be deducted from because even in prenup, the um the the other spouse who's not the the person bringing on the income, they get a, a lump sum. Yeah. So I yep. a lump sum, she should pay him back. Yeah, I, I agree. agree. And I agree. Then, my thing is, he, if they have joint custody. He shouldn't have to pay that much money if it's joint yeah. custody. Yeah. Anyway. Well, she 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 filed for uh, full custody and he filed for joint custody. Right. So they just still try to work all it out. But I don't. I never understood that. I don't know why a woman would not want her would would not want her spouse to share the custody. So she can get more I money. Would, I, I, but it's ridiculous because my thing is, who want to keep them kids all the time? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Two boys you know too. I mean? like, yeah. Right. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like, I was. I read this too. There was a thing going around, like you know, why did women don't want that? It's mostly just it's money, and I think yeah. it's just mostly bitterness. A yeah. lot of it's bitterness. Yeah, it's bitterness. I would. I would be signing the next paper that says so bad. <laughs> he, he, he would have thought he made a mistake. Okay, come, come and get your kids. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Well, let us take a quick break. We'll come back with a couple more hot topics. Right back after this. I've never been one to hate, but when I think of all you did when you was all up in my crib, it kind of made me feel away. Now I feel away. Had your back since day one, I never let you hit the ground But you was really kind of selfish, should've known you was a clown You was real sneaky with it, always calling through my phone I hope you found what you was looking for, cause now I'm really gone And I'm never looking back, no, cause that shit was whack You was really talking crazy, even tried to call me lazy You forget who feeding you, you forget who getting food Should've let your ass stop, cause I wasn't in the mood But I tried to play it cool, then you thought I was a fool Trying to be someone you're not
Everybody, this is Ezekiel JB, and you're listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Want to remind you, we're all over social media: Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, of course, our official website, the Stephen Knight Show.com. You can also check us out on iHeartRadio, Spotify. Just go to our website, the Show.com. All right, so there is a music festival being held in Saudi Arabia. It's called. Uh, I just had the name of it. It's called. Oh, Jada World. Jada World Fest and Nicki Minaj was slated to perform actually today but um, after being educated on human rights violations against women and LGBT, LGBTQ plus communities um, she pulled out of it, backed out of it well now Jana Jackson Tigga, Chris Brown, 50 Cents and Future are taking the stage and so the Human Rights Foundation is um, taking a stand as well and they're they're calling these artists out and claiming that they're only choosing money over basic human rights. What do you What are your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it's the I think it's the artist's um, personal morals and responsibility to make those type of decisions. Um, I think that maybe they could be influenced by providing them with information, but forcing them to, to do as you would, or as, as I, I just think it's their it's their personal choice. Mm-hmm. Um, and that 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 every choice has consequences. So they go there. It it will have to be based on their fan base too. Yeah. Because they can go there and do the, and do the show, and their fan base is like, you know what? Because they, I won't support them. So it doesn't. The consequences doesn't have to look the way the human rights want it to. Mm-hmm. They don't have to. You know I mean, they. I think their job is to provide as much information to these artists, give it to their management, maybe plead their case, and then leave it alone. Yeah. It's still up to them. That's true. That's true. Well, kudos to Nicki, for Nicki Minaj for pulling out. She made a statement on Twitter when she uh, pulled out. All right, so this school district in Pennsylvania, man. So apparently um, the students owe more than $20,000 on unpaid lunches. And so the school sent out a letter threatening the parents that if the, the school district sent out a letter threatening the parents that if they didn't pay, that they were, their kids could end up in foster care. Um... They said the letter went out to about a thousand parents, and the parents, of course, did not take t- did not take uh, this lightly. They they were outraged. Um, you know, parents a lot of parents are struggling, and um, to threaten you know threaten uh, foster care. They said that you can um, be sent to dependency court for neglecting your child's right to food. And that's the result that your child could be taken out your home place to foster care. I was watching um, a show today, and they said how insensitive that not only was that um, threat, because they were using it because they said that another way, they weren't able to get any money from any any other way, so they tried this way. But they sent out another letter that was less uh, threatening. But someone said that what you did, you're, you're making foster care seem like a bad thing because some kids actually need foster care. So you're trying to say, oh, you're gonna be in, you'll be in foster care. What if there's a child in the school districts in foster care? You know what I mean? So, um, what are your thoughts on that on that letter? Was it out of line? That was very out of line. That was very out of line. Unprofessional, out of line, insensitive. Um, didn't show any compassion. Ridiculous. Whoever wrote it, approved it, should be fired. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that you know we have we have been involved in 
trying to help yep. repay off yep. his loan. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's an issue that's that's all over. Yeah, the fact that you're charging kids for basic meals when their parents can't afford it—that should be something that they do away with. Period. Right. Kids should be fed. they should be fed if they're in public school. They should be fed. Um, to to not to not feed the children and then send a letter like that—it's just so insensitive. Like, who in their right mind would draft something like that and, and and thought it was okay? Right, right. Someone out of touch again. Once again, out of touch. And also, um, someone made Cheryl Underwood made a uh, great point that kids cannot learn a, cannot learn an empty stomach, and that could be the only meal that they have that day if their parents are struggling that bad. So, you know, it should be something that's put in the budget so kids every kid can eat. That shouldn't be that should be non negotiable. All right. Well, the last story. So, uh, Soldier Boy he just got out of jail three months um, because of probation violations. He was released 146 days early due to a combination of good behavior and serving and time served and the jail being overcrowding. What they're saying now, he is trying to get on the right track and he is um, kicking people out of his house. People, because apparently while he was in jail, people, uh, someone broke into his home, and he said that 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 jail time was an eye opener for him. So he's kicking people out of his house and he is um, staying off. He's spending less time on Twitter and social media. You think that's a good idea, or and there hasn't been anything that made you have to take a, you know, a a, be, a break on something. I don't know how to answer that question, um, but I will say I think in his case, um, I think in his case, I think it's a good idea. I think he's been surrounded by people who haven't been helping him mm-hmm. um, make good decisions. I think that his circle has been enabling him um, to make poor choices. So I think the social media, taking a break from his circle, social media and all those things to get himself together, that's always a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And that's good that, you know, jail time, okay, this is serious. It's time to get my mind right. So shout out to him and um, good luck with his transformation. Well, Ms. Parker, I want to thank you again for Hot Topics. It's just me and you um, holding it down, but we did our thing. Hope you have a great week, and I'll talk next Monday. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you, too, Stevie. All right, right back after this. Oh, oh, oh. It's so funny how things change. We were as close, but then you slipped away. Now I'm losing my baby, it's driving me crazy. And I'm about to go insane The hell am I gonna do? Can't do this thing without you Though forever was on, now forever is gone And baby girl, I'm missing you Took you on shopping sprees When all you really wanted was time with me Eyes wide open but I could not see Just know if ever you give me a chance I'm giving you all, giving you all, giving you all, giving you all. I said I'm giving you all, giving you all, giving you all, giving you all, giving all. When I was struggling, you held me down When I was slipping, girl, you stood your ground Anytime I felt lost, always gave me real talk You helped me be a better man Then this music finally came around I'm flying high, but you ain't leaving ground The shit I put you through, the hell am I to do? Cause baby girl, I'm missing you Took you on shopping sprees, yeah
up y'all it's the first lady faith evans and you're listening to the Stephen knight show welcome back to the Stephen knight show our guest tonight is an actor that can be seen on film and on stage best known for his roles in limbo the house of victor excuse me and of course uh, dynasty please help me welcome the very talented ezekiel ezekiel ejb i can't speak today (laughs) welcome to the show (laughs) thank you thank you Thank you for taking time out your schedule. I'm I'm excited to have you. I was reading up on you because we've seen you, but you know a lot of people don't know much about you. Tell us uh, a little bit about you know your upbringing and where you're from and everything. Yeah, so I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. I'm first generation Nigerian. I'm the first of my family to be born in the states. Uh, I grew up in Arlington, well, grew up in Dallas, Arlington specifically. Um, Lived there basically all my life. Moved to Atlanta, Georgia, summer of 2017 to, you know, pursue my dreams, acting and everything like that. 
Um, and now I'm in L.A. Uh, yeah. 2019. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. You where I want to be. So, so how did you get started in acting and knowing that's what you wanted to pursue? Well, honestly, um, it all started when I was a kid. Uh-huh. I believe I was around the age of seven or eight. I was watching uh, Keenan Keenan Mitchell on screen. It was it was either all that or Keenan Mitchell. Okay. And uh, Keenan Mitchell was on the screen. And I was just watching him, and I was like, "Man, how come he's on TV and I'm not? Man, I can do everything he's doing just like that. Matter of fact, I can do it better." So I started you know, listening <laughs> to him. Yeah. And it just went from there. I guess that's when the bug hit me. And so as I got older, I was like, "Man, I really want to act," because you know, of course. When you're seven or eight, nobody's going to listen to you. You say, I want to be an actor. Right, right. I think you're, you're playing around, you're not serious about it, but I was serious. Like, I just knew. Uh, so, as I got older, I started going to little auditions here and there. Uh, my parents, of course, had to take me because I was still a minor. Right. And eventually came to a where my parents stopped taking me because I remember my dad specifically saying he didn't see anything good coming out of this whole acting thing I was trying to do. So, I was like, okay. Well, that's the case. You're not going to take me to any of these auditions no more. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, wait until I turn 18. Exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah. As, as I turn 18, I started hitting the ground, hit the ground running. Well, you were t- being 18, I know, because it, it, it's one thing when you're auditioning and you have your parents, their support, you know, actually there with you physically. But then you're going there by yourself mm-hmm. at 18. Were you intimidated or were you just so passionate? You knew it, what, you know, I'll do it. Uh, at first, uh, you know, I was I was a little nervous. Yeah. But at the same time, I didn't really care because I knew that that's what I wanted to do. You know, right, nobody, right. there's no handouts, you know, so I have to go out there and get and, and make and make a name for myself. So. That's true. That's true. So your first your first gig, I heard that you were very excited about this. What was your first gig? Um, my very very first gig, I think, was. It was some independent film called Psychotic, I believe. Uh, the entire thing ended up getting scrapped. Yeah. Uh, crazy, crazy story. The entire thing ended up getting scrapped. But it was a great learning experience as far as, like, being uh, a, a principal actor on, on a film and, you know, just being on set in general. So that was my first gig. And it was, uh, it was a director named Fred T. out in uh, Dallas, Texas, who uh, basically gave me an opportunity, gave me the Basically, gave me, gave me my time to shine, you know. To yeah. See what I can do with it. He yeah. really believed in me and really, really saw that I had something that I can show for and stuff like that. So. Okay. Yeah. And for most of us, we uh, met you on Dynasty, of course, the reboot of Dynasty, and you play uh, mm-hmm. Young Jeff. I mean, when you booked that, yes, when you booked that, I mean, what's what's going through your head at this point? <laughs> <laughs> when I booked Dynasty. Uh, and I was like, oh, mama, I made it, you know. Right, all right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm listening to you. Oh, yeah, I was like, man, this has been a long time coming because, like, uh, I think right before I booked, that was when I first moved to Atlanta. I think uh, it was less than uh, less than a whole, less than six months I booked Dynasty being wow. in Atlanta. Wow. Um, wow. And... It, it was a blessing, man. Like it was, it was crazy. It was out of nowhere too. So I was like, yeah, I'm meant to be here because I was meeting a lot of people that I didn't expect to meet, even being in Atlanta for the first month. Okay. So, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of people in the business who were like way higher up than I am. I'm not gonna sit here and name everybody. Right. But uh, yeah, it, was, it was definitely a blessing, man. Just, just, just being out there and really like going, going hard after my, after my dreams and what I believe in and everything like that. Yeah. And I, and I read that you, you know, the fact that you got to be on a huge production set and seeing what really goes on behind the scenes, that was really impactful for you. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Yeah, yeah. What was your biggest learning from being on that show? Say it again? What was your biggest learning lesson in, in, the, in your career of being on that show? My business, my biggest uh, learning, is that what you said? You, were less, you know... I'm sorry. What was the biggest thing you learned from being on that show? Got you. Uh, yeah. Biggest thing I learned was, I believe, uh, one of my, I don't want to say assistant, but one of the people on production who was basically handling my, my makeup and like little 
minuscule tasks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. After, before I rap, she came up to me. She told me to just keep being myself. Uh, don't let the industry change me. I have a, I'm a very bright kid, very uh, respectful gentleman, yeah. uh, young man, and everything. Just keep being you. Don't let the industry change you because they will try to change you. Most um, definitely. Yeah. So. That, that, I guess that was like the biggest takeaway from being on that set. Everything else, it was like I, I do this all the time. Right, <laughs> it seems pretty natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, we're in the with the Me Too movement, and you're seeing a lot of diversity, like you know, Black Panther, Crazy Crazy Rich Asians, and a lot of diverse characters and people of color on TV. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like this is like the perfect time for you, really, as you continue to grow in the industry, because there are more options for you know, people like look like you and I. Yes, yes, most definitely. Um, I used to, I used to wish that I that I like grew up in the '90s era because that was around the time, like '90s, late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, that was around the time where the, where the industry they love Nigerians. Like you, mm -hmm. you saw a Nigerian on almost every show. You know, right? Like, doing something somewhere. Uh, but I mean, even now today, like I feel like it's coming back, especially with the whole diversity. Uh, aspect about it all and that I you know I really have a chance to showcase my talent like I get I get like really crazy auditions all the time for a lot of big uh, studio productions which is which is great I have a great team behind me yeah who's, you know able to put my name in somebody's ear so that, that way I can get in the door and get an opportunity uh, but at the same time I, I can see the diversity is really playing a big part in that as well because they're always looking for young black men who can who can really act you know? exactly so, yeah 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 what, what would be your dream role my dream role man uh i want to work with uh james cameron on avatar okay uh, yeah i heard, i heard they're basically almost done rapping uh -huh. <laughs> so i'm hoping that they'll bring your boy in some way for <laughs> but hey man you never know as long as i get to work with my boy james yeah, yeah, I know. I was reading uh, or watching something on your YouTube, and you were saying how you know, as an actor, especially starting off, you have to have a side hustle because you never know, you know, the next job, next gig. Uh, to speak to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I remember when I went when I went all in, uh, basically like just doing acting full time when I was in Atlanta. Uh, my side hustle was. Like Uber and Lyft, like I was just driving yeah. Uber and Lyft, yeah. and it was like sustained. Uh, and it was also flexible enough to like go to my audition when I had one, or go to a booking when I had one. You know, I didn't really have to answer to a boss or answer to to any management or anything like that. You know, it's just everything was on my own time. So right, right, yeah. Do you feel like that? You know, you know. Of course, you have your parents, but the fact that you started going auditions on your own and you know relocating Atlanta and now LA, do you feel like you've had to grow up a little bit more faster, um, you know, mature, or mature even more faster than say if you did it differently. Um, I would, I would, I would agree to that. Uh, agree with that because being out there by myself, not knowing anybody, and you know, literally have to work and work up from ground zero. I right. learned a lot. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot of life things at an early at a young age. I was, I think, I moved. I went to Atlanta when I was. I just turned 21, wow. and I uh, went straight to Atlanta. Yeah, so like I, I was young. I'm still young, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot of life lessons. Excuse me, a lot of life lessons, man. And uh, it, it taught me a lot. Um, so like everything, every opportunity I get, every uh, gig that I book, you know, I, I don't take it for granted because it's it's just you know I, I work so hard to, to even get to that space. Exactly. You know, like everything. I, grateful for yeah. So. yeah what have been some of the the challenges uh you know pursuing this industry even the successes you've had what have been some of the challenges uh i want to say i want to say being super close to booking something that can change your life forever yeah but not get but not getting it <laughs> yeah that's true that's true. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had multiple, multiple encounters with uh, really, really, really big projects. Some of them are coming out this year, 
Um, and some of them are coming out uh, next year. Uh-huh. But I was really booking it. And these are big, big time stuff. I'm not going to name drop or anything. Right, right. We all know who the producers are. We all know the studios, you know. Um, you, you, you'll see it when it comes out. I'm not going to, you know, hit names. I'm not trying to promote them. <laughs> Right. Thing, We're not promoting them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even know if I if I can because right. you know they they have their own emotional thing going on or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I came really close to a lot of big things uh, that could have changed my life forever, and they just chose to go a different direction from what you know my my manager and agent told me. So, well, that's plenty of time. I, I know you have some big things that you're gonna be in. I, I know it's gonna be a matter of time, matter of time before sure. it happens for you. Um, so, yes, sir. what advice would you give? I mean, you're still very young, like you said. What advice would you give someone, you know, you think back to when you started auditioning as a child and then, you know, into your teenage years. What advice would you give someone who's maybe at that point? I would say to just believe in yourself, follow your dreams, never give up, and put in the work. Yeah. Point blank, period. Most definitely. Tell everyone about your YouTube page because you know I was watching the interview uh, on there, and you you know you are very bright and uh, you have a lot of positive uh, messages that you put out there. Tell us about your YouTube video page where they can check all that out. Yeah, I'm I'm mainly on Instagram. Uh, I I think I was uploading a few things to YouTube at one point, but I'm okay. mainly on Instagram now. Follow okay. me on Instagram at I am underscore Ezekiel underscore a J V. That's spelled E Z E K I E L. Last name is A J E I G B E. Uh that's like Ezekiel Elliott or Ezekiel Bread or Ezekiel the skateboard brand, whatever you want. <laughs> I get it all. I get all right. It all. I bet. Ezekiel in the Bible, you know. You're right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Anything on the horizon that you can tell us about? Uh yeah, so I'm not sure if I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. So I'm working on a new BET project out in Atlanta right now. Oh, uh, I'm a, a recurring character on a new show. It's not out yet. I don't know if I can say the name of the show. Just, just be be on watch. It's going straight to streaming as soon as we're done finish the, finishing the first season. So. Ezekiel and Jamie, man, thank you so much for joining us tonight and wish you continued success. And I know I'll be watching you in a highly produ- highly Massive movie soon. I know that's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> Most definitely. Well, listen, again, our thanks goes out to Ezekiel and JB. For more information, go to our website, thestevenightshow.com. We'll be right back after this. We in this VIP, like all over our sweet Self-discovery lesson learned, we on our outfit, Chitchcock, East Coast hard, West Coast hard, rest of peace to pop, ho, where they get pop, round and round we go, life psycho, TikTok, it's me, someone an anomaly, first degree of hip-hop, hypocrisy, never fit in what you motherfucking label me, as I sit back and watch, never interject, money in the bank with the ill concept, vision is clear, never gets complex, chilling on the scene like Peace Hotel, for the 1800 at Vanilla Coke, Sit back and chill, maybe even smoke. Summertime lounging, good to go. Chilling at the beach, that's how we roll. I'm making sexy, baby. Make it sexy, make it super fly. I'm making sexy, baby. Make it sexy, make it fly. I'm making sexy, baby. Make it sexy, make it super fly. I'm making sexy, baby. I'm making sexy, baby. I'm making sexy, baby. Way back of sellers, Hollywood Hill, real dealers, no filters. Lodging in the cut with the cold chillers, twisted on the sun, propaganda for fun, run for us, run dream builders. Fly establishment clean with fresh kicks. Good even sunbathing where the money went. Harlem bars, Harley stars, two twisted Uber cars, stripper poles, diamond gold, church basket, tied and hold. Private gyms, a salty ribs, exclusive diamond fold, friends, purple label, more stable, light coach, now you're able. Gabba tents, spas, tents, freaky hints. But yo, where the money where the make it sexy, baby? Make it sexy, make it super fly. Make it sexy, baby. Make it sexy, make it fly. Make it sexy, baby. Make it sexy, make it super fly. Make it sexy, baby. Make it shake it. Just don't make it get that sexy. Scene stealers, Hollywood. 
Hollywood heel dealers Lounging in the cut with the big willers Rocking clean whips and fresh kicks Hauling bars, holly stars, twisted Uber cars Car ride by with the booming system Throwback by with a good detention Lover who you are, don't be scared to mention Chillin' with my beats, no ill pretension Catch the waves, that's a day, Sundays, fun days Ride days, day, day, make money any day Whatever you do, love it and be free And remember, I'll make it sexy, baby
Welcome back to the Stephen A. Show. Adam, you're holding it down solo. How's it going? How's it going? Well, Stephen, how are you? I cannot complain. Cannot complain. How was your weekend? It was uh, good. You know, it's, well, it was mostly good. It's been about 100 degrees uh, with the heat index, probably oh about 110 gosh. up here. I don't know how it's been for you, but it's it's been rough. Yeah, it's been uh, really Going hot. outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Been... yeah, other than that, no, it's it's good. It's just, yeah. And, you know, it's almost like there's no there's no point in going outside. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I'll let you take it away with movie reviews. All right. Well, I saw the number one movie in the box office this weekend, which, if you haven't heard, is The Lion King. Woo-hoo. And, uh, yes, I know. This is uh, a remake of a movie that's only 25 years old, uh, the traditional animated feature of The Lion King, and this is now with uh, computer animation. And for anyone in our audience who hasn't seen The Lion King, it basically follows the story of this young uh, lion cub who... Uh, leaves his kingdom due to certain reasons and he comes back to take over the uh, pride lands of where his father once ruled. And this version stars uh, a lot of celebrities. So we have Donald Glover, Beyonce Knowles, Seth Rogen, um, John Oliver, James Earl Jones comes back. So a huge celebrity cast and, and several others as well. And um, they were, tr- I guess, John Favreau, who directed Iron Man and several other movies, was trying to make something a little different. I think um, it is it is basically a shot for shot remake of the 1994 movie, and it is fine. It's it's you know I think a lot of people got to remember with these remakes is a lot of them are geared towards kids, and if you're a child and never seen the original Lion King, you will enjoy this. I think for us who've seen the original and remember growing up on it, it's going to be a little bit of a letdown. The biggest problem is it's hard to do the, the, the emotion in these animal voices because this is a realistic line. It's not like the Jungle Book remake that came out a few years ago. It's hard to capture the emotion of the eyes, the emotion of the mouth when all these animals look realistic. And so you lose a lot of that in the movie. Uh, in addition to, it seemed like everything was kind of uh, rushed through. So a lot of scenes would happen, and it didn't give you time to kind of feel the emotion that the original movie let you feel before it hopped into the next scene. So overall, it was okay. Uh, you know, it, it broke records for July, the biggest opening in July, uh, biggest animation, I think, opening ever. So... It's going to do well. Disney will be fine with it. But um, if you don't have little ones and you want to enjoy kind of the, the original, then you can skip this one, maybe see it later. But you're not missing much. $531 million over the weekend. That's not bad, huh? <laughs> not bad at all. No, no. I mean, Disney, and, it's, and, and just as a, as a note, so uh, Avengers Endgame is now the – the top grossing movie of all time. So they okay. finally beat Avatar this weekend. So, uh, yeah, Disney, Disney's doing it right. I mean, people are going to see remakes of movies, yeah. even if they're uh, not that exciting. So, yeah, they'll, they'll keep it going. Yeah, it's funny because people were uh, talking about um, Beyonce, were calling it the Beyonce movie. <laughs> they said she had, like, two lines. <laughs> two she didn't have many lines. <laughs> So they were disappointed. She, she did not. <laughs> she did not. And I, I will I will bring that up. That's another problem with the movie too, is it's the star power kind of distracts. So when you hear Donald Glover, you're not hearing Simba anymore, you're right. hearing Donald Glover. Yeah. You hear Nala, you're hearing Beyonce. You know, it's it's hard for you to separate that. Uh, John Oliver sounds like John Oliver just as a bird doing it. So right. Right. um yeah, it loses a little bit of that originality of uh, the the original movie that had it. Miss Parker liked it. She just said it was long. She said it was about two hours long. Yeah, it was about two hours. So it's uh, about thirty minutes longer than the original. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and I I don't even know where they added more stuff too. I mean, there were definitely points parts where it seemed like they added a little more. Mm-hmm. I will say this though: if you like uh, Timon and Pumbaa, they did a great job. They have all new material. It feels like for this movie, and it, they they were hilarious the whole time. That's awesome. So. Uh, if you're a fan of them, check them out. Um, the only other thing I want to add is I did see, and uh, since I was 
unable to make it last week, uh, Stranger Things 3. I don't oh, know yeah. if we talked about that recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it a lot uh, better than the first, uh, better than season two. Uh, you know, you're kind of getting more of that 80s vibe. It was filmed uh, actually pretty near you at, uh, I think, Gwinnett Place Mall. Okay. Yeah. Um, was where it was the setting for the uh, the mall. So if anyone hasn't seen Stranger Things, uh, it's fun. It's a Netflix show, so if you have Netflix, there's no harm in checking it out. Uh, you'll you'll know within the first like half of the season if it's a show for you if you're into that kind of '80s nostalgia sci-fi thing. If not, then you can move on. But uh, season three was definitely pretty fun. Nice, nice, nice. Are they coming down the pipeline? Yeah. So the big one this weekend will be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and this is the next Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, and it's about a, a, a television actor and his stunt double that kind of had their time in the sun and now it's kind of like their time is fading and it's happening in the late sixties in LA. Uh, so you'll also get a little bit of taste of, or you'll, you'll get a little sight of, um, Charles Manson and how they interact with him in the movie. So as you know, if you like Quentin Tarantino, this one will be up your alley. Definitely looks like a fun one. It's, uh, uh, pretty long, I think two hours and 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm I'm excited. That's that's the big one coming up uh, this weekend, and then I I kind of uh, go back and forth on this uh, Hobbs and Shaw movie. I don't know if you know. This is like the Fast, Fast and Furious spinoff okay. with uh, The Rock and Jason Statham and Idris Elba. It's, it's it looks as dumb as the other Fast and Furious movies, but it looks like one of those fun dumb movies. So. Um, Time will tell if I see it or not, but yeah, that's the other movie on my radar. Have you seen the trail for Cats? I've seen a little. I've seen the pictures. It looks very weird. Yesterday, they said they get the um, 50-50 uh, backlash. You know, some people like it, some people don't, because they used a lot of. They said the original, you know, it was all makeup and costume, but this one is digitally enhanced, and so people were thinking it was gross. <laughs> they look gross, but yeah, they, I, it's the, like it's. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I agree. It's like that Sonic the Hedgehog thing trailer that people were complaining oh, about yeah. earlier this year because he looks so weird. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's uh, that. That's the same thing. Yeah, it, it definitely looks weird. There's a movie coming out that I want to see. It comes out in August, August ninth. It's called The Kitchen, and it has uh, Melissa McCarthy and Tiffany Haddish in it, and Elizabeth Moss. I really want to see it. It looked like it, the trail looked really good. It looked really good. Have you heard anything about that one? What's it? It's called The Kitchen. No, but they're no, playing it's about, like, so it's about they're playing like they're not com- like they don't come off from the trailer like they're being funny. It seems like it's more of a you know serious. Oh, movie. so it's yeah, uh, so, so wives of New York gangsters in the seventies. Yeah, they take over the organization when their yeah. husbands land in prison. Mm. This looks really good. Yeah, it does look really good. I want to see that, so we'll see. We shall see. We shall see. What do you think? Yeah, we'll add it to your list. Right, <laughs> right. No, my, no, that's my long list. <laughs> <laughs> the never-ending list. Yeah. Right. No, no, that's it. That's uh, that's it for me. So, um, yeah, right. looking forward to the next Quentin Tarantino movie. Yeah, that'll be nice. All right, well, as always, thank you for letting us know what to save our money on, what not to, and I uh, hope you have a great week. All right, you as well. All right, right back after this.
hundred dollars. Keep them dice in your hands. Won't have to scream and holler. Won't you make me a man? Baby, I know you. You don't wanna do nothing uncomfortable. But baby, rest assured that we look good together in storm or sunny weather. Baby, let me know where you wanna go. Take it to the door. We could do whatever. Girl, if you're ready, come grab a hold. Great Penny, you rocking with the Stephen Knight show. Okay, bye. Well, that's our show. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And shout out to Ezekiel Ajabe for joining us. Continued success to you. Hope you all have a great week. We'll see you next Monday. Peace and good night. Step to the right, then side to the left.